In this valley just east of Everett, Washington, a quiet transformation is underway. For 70 years, the area was home to hay fields and grazing cattle. Now, native plants replace agricultural grasses. Waterfowl rest here, while other birds nest and brood. Just beyond the dikes, salmon migrate and rest on their journey from the sea. And it is this setting that created one of Puget Sound Energy's environmental, engineering, and construction challenges to rebuild electric regional transmission lines that are essential to keeping the lights on in the Puget Sound area and beyond. E.B. Slough is part of an estuary, a place where fresh water meets Puget Sound. In 1923, local farmers formed a drainage district to manage the basin and convert the land to agricultural use. Tide gates allowed water to drain from the basin to the slough and prevented rising tidal water from entering the basin. A year later, in 1924, Puget Sound Energy built electric transmission lines on dry ground within an easement corridor through the drainage district. Over the years, the dikes were maintained and the water kept at bay. By 1992, the social tides had turned. A flood control plan was developed to breach the dike and restore 230 acres of historic estuary. However, before breaching the dike, PSE would need to relocate the lines or rebuild in the same location so that they could withstand the daily tides of an estuary environment. Well, UB Slough is right in the middle of a major corridor between our Cedar Woolley substation in Skagit County and actually Seattle City Lights Bothell substation here in Snohomish County. So it's really part of the main grid. And this, this little two-mile uh, section is very important to that transmission system. Puget Sound Energy operates two transmission lines here that occupy the easement corridor established in 1924. When the diking district was dissolved in 2002, the tide gates were no longer maintained and became stuck in an open position or fell off completely. And surface water began to accumulate in the basin. As a result, it had become increasingly difficult to maintain and service these lines. We all know that estuaries are disappearing at an alarming rate. Because of all the valuable environmental functions served by estuaries, it's a noble goal to try to recover or reclaim estuaries wherever possible. Unfortunately, wood pole transmission lines were not designed for the ponded water conditions or the wet soils or the tidal fluctuations found in estuaries. In November 2006, a crisis occurred. During a winter storm, when one of the poles in waterlogged soils fell over onto the structure of the adjacent line, Threatening the power supply to the entire region, PSE performed an emergency repair and, with a sharpened sense of urgency, continued efforts to find a workable, permanent solution for this essential part of the power grid. For many years, PSE had worked with neighbors to reach agreement on a route that would minimally impact their views. At first, there was strong opposition to PSE's plan for rebuilding the lines. However, the community, PSE, and the resource agencies were all willing to work collaboratively to develop an acceptable plan. Initially we had we felt like we were, we were being ignored and so by forming the corporation and then approaching PSE's corporate management we found that the changes were made and the listening improved tremendously and the working together relationship with PSE and Snohomish County has been a pleasant surprise for me. I fully expected this to be a big battle and it's been anything but. The message from neighbors was clear. Rebuild the lines in or close to the existing alignments and make the poles as low as possible. All those passions from various perspectives came together to influence how we designed and ultimately built the project. Over the last couple of years, uh, Puget Sound Energy's efforts to work with the community and the citizens has just been exemplary. It's been outstanding and I'm extremely pleased with the progress that was made and the final solution that was arrived at. In order to build the route favored by the community, Puget Sound Energy had to meet a unique set of construction challenges. The line passes through state and federally protected wetlands and is home to three endangered species of fish 
so any construction must have a minimal impact on the wetlands. To avoid disruption of salmon migration, construction must begin and end during a narrow time frame from June 1 to October 31. And finally, PSE had to build its structure in soft soils on foundations 70 to 100 feet deep. So, how would Puget Sound Energy manage the challenges of building in the EB Basin? They would use special vehicles called marsh buggies to carry materials, equipment, and people to the foundation sites. Marsh buggies, these amphibious, tracked vehicles, are easy to maneuver on soft soils or water, and they minimize damage to the soils or root systems in wetland areas. PSC would also use a special type of foundation for its structures, a micro-pile foundation, which can be assembled with lightweight components and constructed with lightweight equipment. The micro-pile foundation is a technology that was developed in Venice, Italy, nearly 70 years ago. Micropiles are a special deep foundation system. They're much like driven piles in the fact that they extend deep below the ground surface, but they're very different than driven piles in that they're a replacement pile as opposed to a displacement pile where most piles are driven into the earth. These are drilled into the earth and the geotechnical material, the soils are removed and they're replaced by high strength steel and grout. In May 2007, PSE chose the Wilson Crux team supported by power engineers and Landau to design and build the new line. With steel poles on micropile foundations, marsh buggies and helicopters, Puget Sound Energy could place new structures that could withstand local conditions, minimally impact the neighbors' views, and leave a light footprint on the landscape. As the project neared completion, an air crane helicopter capable of lifting 16,000 pounds carried the steel structures from the staging area and lowered them onto awaiting foundations. Beginning with the pre-assembled tops, the air crane was able to lift and place all the components for the poles in only two days. steel pole is 105 to 120 feet tall and is installed on a 6 to 10 foot diameter concrete pier, extending 7 to 10 feet above ground or water level. Once the poles were placed, a smaller helicopter threaded a line through travelers attached to cross arms. A crew worked in tandem with the helicopter to string the line. All necessary equipment for a future upgrade was installed. Finally, the wooden poles were hauled away temporary access roads removed, and disturbed areas were graded, recontoured, and replanted. We are going to be restoring these to a certain degree. What we're doing is we're introducing seed. This is an extremely fertile environment with a lot of native vegetation there, and so some of it's reseeding on its own. In November, just four months after construction began, the new lines were energized. Today is a culmination of about 15 years of effort. The structures will blend in as well as they can. Um, they're pretty much bulletproof. We don't expect to have to come out and do anything else to them. Because of the many species of fish and wildlife that rely on intertidal habitat, estuaries often are called the nurseries of the sea. PSE's EB Slough project has demonstrated that it is possible to have a reliable, sustainable power source while still protecting the natural world. I get a lot of pleasure from working on projects that have meaningful and long-term benefits to watersheds. And this is going to be a sterling example of that. Because PSE used innovative technologies to rebuild lines compatible with an estuary environment and in a location favored by local residents, the door has been opened for permanent restoration of 230 acres of historic estuary. Now the natural nursery can return to its own purposes quietly restoring itself to the ways of a hundred years past and coexisting with the power lines to serve the region for the future.